But we want to be quiet and be respectful of these men who have worked so hard for so many months, some of them over a year, and you're all still chattering away. Chatter, 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 chatter. See how annoying that is? So awful. It's just because you're so excited, right? You know what's exciting? Starting. So awesome. Starting. We love to debate and argue. We have the ultimate debate me bro culture. It is amazing. I embrace it. I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. Are you all ready? Fantastic. We have some beautiful faces up here. We've got Mike Termott. We've got Joshua Smith. We've got Michael Wettenwald. We've got Chase Oliver. We've got Charles Ballet. And we've got Lars Mapstead. I believe we've got an hour and a half set aside for this debate. I'm not sure if you all, some of you I know, caught a recent debate between Laura Loomer and Dave Smith on Israel. It was a very hot debate. It was very well moderated by Liam Cosco, a reporter from the Gray Zone, and we are very happy and excited to welcome him to moderate our presidential debate. Liam, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, I did not moderate that debate with uh, Laura Loomer and Dave Smith, but thank you nonetheless. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to be here. I've always been a libertarian, so I love the energy in here. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's not waste any time. So my first question for you guys tonight, who is your least favorite founding father? Let's start, let's start with Michael. Your least favorite founding father. And how come? If, just briefly, briefly say why. Well, he was a central government uh, fanatic. He wanted to institute the central government, the federal government over us. And uh, this went this aggregated the federal, the federal sovereign, the sovereignty of the states that was supposed to be uh, the, the constitutional arrangement of the United States. So, big government, centralization, all our enemies. Thank you. Joshua? Uh, probably Alexander Hamilton. As well, I, I listen, I'm a uh, staunch anti federalist. If we can get rid of the federal government today, that'd be nice. Thank you. Yeah, let's just keep going down the line this way, and then we'll come to Chase. Mike, sir? Yep. Franklin Roosevelt, we thought he was founding a brand new damn country, we were not the same for The idea of imposing on us what he called the New Deal was completely unacceptable. Change the United States is a very, very profoundly bad way. And we need to reverse that, impose the new relationship between us and government on the government. We should not be tolerating what someone thinks is a good idea or a good New Deal along the way. Okay. That's not, not a founding father, but we, if, it's all going to be Hamilton if we don't switch it up. So go, just, you know, go for anybody. So, uh, we already have two people being on the stage, Alex and Hamilton, and I'd like to spread the ball around. So I'm going to pick John out of the second president. The guy got the house the second time. The first two just was passed the Aliens and Judicial Act. They did a crime to criticize their government. Who would be guilty if they had the crime to criticize their government this whole way? I know I would be. Anybody who fights against it, they have the liberty to right Oddly enough, I would, I would agree with Mike. Uh, Hamilton, I'm a statesman. I believe the state's rights in rural Jefferson. I think the federal government has taken control of our lives, and it's far too pervasive in this day and age. And the need to be brought under some control. You know, we, we had a balance back in those days where people would argue and say that we need states' rights as opposed to federal rights. And Hamilton was a, was a federal. So 
so I would take any of our founding fathers over anybody that we have in Congress right now. Because they were all, they were all for limiting our government way more than the giant bureaucratic state we have morphed into. They would all be rolling over to their graves right now if they knew what was going on in this cesspool of a city that we are in right now. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, now we're going to switch to incrementalism versus radicalism. That's often a you know debate internally here at the Libertarian Party. I'm going to refer to what Clint Russell said yesterday with Vivek, where he said, "Why not just abolish the FBI, the CIA, and put nothing in its place?" Um, to you guys, would you do that and name, please? which three-letter agencies you would abolish in your first term and to make it as, the list as long as you want. Uh, let's start with Lars and come down this way. Okay. So, I'm sorry, can you repeat Yeah, which, which, do you agree with, you know, Clint Russell saying abolish things like the FBICA, replace them with nothing, and then name additional ones that you would abolish and never replace? Yeah, so for me, the top list is the Federal Reserve. the Department of Education, so that is that is not an abolish. No, so I personally think that there should be some standards so when anyone's children out here get out and decide that they're, say, 15, 16, you know, you have to be able to decide that you're going 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 to be able to decide that you're Thank you. So, uh, I got 
started as a political activist fighting against the federal government. The federal government I was fighting against was the war machine. The war machine that exports death and destruction all over the world, fills the Mississippi and the world with our tax dollars and the needs. But the truth is the war machine does not just exist overseas, but the war machine exists here at home. There are all kinds of federal agencies that ruin your privacy, that attack your and your rights, and those are the agencies you need to get rid of. Starting the entire DHS department all together needs to be So, real quick, quick, what about the DOD? Uh, so, I believe that we need to have a military to defend ourselves, and it doesn't need to be exporting to death and destruction all over the world. Our military equipment is not anywhere that the United States of America protects us from sovereign invasion. I'm telling you right now, no one would ever do that. Why? Because we also have a well armed citizen population. <laughs>
talking about even how to reform the Defense Department. The Defense Department makes decisions like invading Afghanistan and invading Iraq. And let this sink in. Spending not billions but trillions of dollars, not costing thousands of lives to over one million. Does that sound like the decision that you would make? Does that sound like the decision that your fellow Americans would make? Does that sound like a decision you can find anybody in your neighborhood to go along with? There is no reason that you should tolerate the government that makes decisions that are absolutely counter to your values and to your interests. Not only should we sunset every single one of these agencies, except for the Department of Defense, we should be sunsetting the Department of Defense. The reason for this is because it needs to be reconstituted. Do you believe, as many libertarians apparently do, that we need a defense department to protect our border? It has to start from scratch. It cannot start with the defense department that we have today. And the same needs to be said for each of these other agencies. It might be true in some alternative universe, and I know how, to reform the FBI. But i got to tell you, as someone who has spent decades in and around watching the FBI, it's not worth it. There is nothing there worth saving. You need to end it. You need to end it and start from scratch. And one more thing. If someone tells you that they can reform monetary policy without any of the Federal Reserve System, they are not an economist, or else I'm not, and I damn well am. And the Fed! And the Fed! And the Fed! And the Fed! All right, so here's another topic that is uh, pretty hotly debated, probably in this room, um, and that's immigration. There are the old open borders libertarians, and there's today's border tarians. I've heard them called the Dave Smith camp. The you know we gotta you know uh, protect the southern border. So if you guys could give me a, give me an uh, answer for your immigration policy. Are you an open borders libertarian? Let's start with Chase. So I'm So basically, open borders would be someone shows up to the facility, they get an ID, we fingerprint them or whatever, and then they're free to go. So Let's go down the line this way. 
Sure. So, so I'm the state's right guy, and I think the state should have the right to determine who it is that they want to state. But where, where, where I believe in the state is that, you know, I, I've seen a lot of persons from, from across this world, and a lot of persons that came up from Central America, these are good people, and I agree wholeheartedly. Most of the persons that are coming to this country are not bad individuals. We just happen to have a system right now where social services are, are just giving out hand over fist products and goods to persons who couldn't get it in their home homeland. And they're looking for a better way of life. Right? And, and we, we are a party that believes in individual rights and taking care of people and, and, and freedoms and personal autonomy. So, so to deny these people the ability to come get a better way of life is, is completely antithetical to what it is that we all espouse here in this program. I think we need to make it so that if someone's coming into the system, they can pay into the system. It's asinine that they, you can come into the United States of America right now, and you want to work, but you can't, and you can't legally. And so now you have persons that may be on the other side of the aisle and say, hey, these people are taking what I want, what I paid for. So if we made this whole system easier, people would be accepted, and we can make it so that persons can come on the board, and they can produce things, and they can be beneficial to our society. We need to change. Before, well, why are we going about saying that we need to open borders and close borders? We need to fix the system right now that's in place, which is primarily how we go about giving out social services, which need to be cut. Lars. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of watching mothers and children crawl under barbed wire across the river. being separated and children being trafficked across our border. And the reason for this is a failed freaking drug war. The we gave a monopoly to the cartels who are trafficking humans across our border. There is only one function of the Border Patrol and that is to keep bad people out and let good people in. We need to end the chaos at the border. The chaos at the border is caused by the Democrats and the Republicans who don't want to do anything about it. Because they are using that to fundraise, they are using that to divide America. Why don't they offer actual freedom solutions? We need to end the welfare state so that we're not driving people to come and get free stuff. But we also but we also need to allow the free movement of people so that we can have the workers that we need. We have, I live in an area where there is a lot of migrant workers. I live in an area where there's a lot of high tech workers. It's very difficult to get a job because the freaking federal government is in the way. Let the market work. Michael. Are you? Okay. We have 21 visas currently in order to get into the United States. We need to reduce this down to three very simple things. You want to be a visitor, you want to be a worker, or you want to be an immigrant. Let people come and then let corporations back those people, find them jobs, get them working in America, and becoming productive members of society. It's so secret that we have a humanitarian crisis regarding immigration. This crisis has been caused by several factors. First of all, the war on drugs. The war on drugs has led to immigrants uh, bringing not only drugs into the country illegitimately in the sense that they are not labeled, they are not properly documented, you know, the drugs are not properly uh, given information as to what is in them and so forth. It's also caused by the foreign interventionism of the United States which has displaced millions of people around the world. It's also caused by trade barriers which have caused companies to move there uh, to not produce in those countries where those people live. People like their homes generally. The problem is with the trade barriers that have restricted production and make it difficult for people to get jobs where they live. And there's one more factor that has uh, exacerbated this crisis, and that is 
the administration of social welfare in common immigrants. This, this is a fact that we must face. This has artificially incentivized people to immigrate. It is distorted the market, if you will, and I hate to talk in market terms when people are involved, but nevertheless, it has distorted the market for immigration, unduly incentivizing people to come here. Like everything else in my campaign, I am for the privatization of immigration. Everything should be privatized. invitation-based immigration system in which people are invited to come and then those sponsors, they, they take out, uh, they assume liability to those immigrants. This is not an illiberal process. This is not an illiberal plan. Because it will actually bring more immigrants into the country and give them a place to work, a place to live, and so forth. The false dichotomy of open borders versus uh, borders carrying, and I think this is a, mis a mischaracterization. Nobody here is calling for shutting people off from the country. What we're saying is, what is the best way to bring it about? What is the best way to administer it? Privatize it. Everything should be privatized, including immigration. Sometimes I think as libertarians we forget that we have two years of one now. We're up here today to try and govern a nation, a nation that deserves to have a sovereign nation. Four percent of the population of the United States today can hardly put food on the table. The Federal Reserve is a giant counterfeiting machine that's stealing our wealth through a tax called inflation. A third of our federal budget is going to the warfare countries most of us could point out on the map. And we're worried about everybody else in the world except for Americans. It's absolutely asinine to do. We, we've got to come up with a plan to take care of Americans first. I call myself the American First Libertarian. I know a lot of people might hear that and be upset about it. But it's the truth. Look, we're trying to cover the nation. We're trying to run the president. We have people out there that have fears. They're worried about how they're going to put food on the table. The middle class is disappearing and it's expanding. It's insane to watch to try to feed their children today. Our, our food bill has gone from $800 a month to almost $2,000 a month in the last four years. We are full. America is full. Listen. We've got to worry about that. It's very important. We've got to be, we've got to be a sovereign nation. We have now left the borders. 1.7 million, 7 million Nazis flooded the border of Poland. We had 6 million flood our border of Texas last year. It's time to change.
some nation for doing something weird. Other than that, we should be welcoming people to the United States as rapidly as possible. This is what makes America great. Please look at last year, look at what happened to us. We want people coming into the United States, building families, building our economy, bringing their entrepreneurial spirit. This is what sets us apart. It is true. I have been to the border where you guys have not been. I have seen human trafficking with my own two eyes. I know how dangerous it is. I know it needs to be shut down. That can be done with modern technology. But this idea of waiting for some Americans to invite people in in order to be inside of the United States, we can't have it. I'm here to invite the entire nation of Cuba into my state. Okay. Okay, thank you. We're going to transition to foreign policy here. Um, I assume everyone on this stage is against most foreign aid, but I want people to make a, a judgment call here. And so the question is, is the Israeli government an ally or an adversary to the American people? Not the American government, but to the American people. Let's start with Mike and come down. It's always used really by those who have 
particular objectives, and those are neocon objectives. The Israeli government has not only extorted billions of dollars from American taxpayers, including military experts, it has killed thousands and thousands of people using our time, using our money, using our arms. That is an outrage. It's a double violation of the non-aggression principle. We're being escorted to pay for it being used to murder people. That is not the song.
Okay, we'll do one more on foreign policy. Um, this is on Ukraine. So just yesterday, the chief of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, advocated that NATO weapons should be used by Ukraine to strike Russian territory. So we could, we, we could very soon be in a situation where our weapons are being used against Russian civilians um, in Russia. What does that mean if you guys are president? How do you, how do you end this war? How do you avoid World War III? Um, let's start with Chase. And
Lars. Do you remember, some of you remember, when I was a kid, I had to do duck and cover drills because Russia was going to bomb us. And I had to hide under my desk when I was six or seven years old. And I was terrified of Russian bombs killing all of America and the end of the world. And this fear was driven into me. And I was certain that this was going to happen all the way up to the day that the Berlin Wall fell. And why did the Berlin Wall fall? Did it fall because we had a tank? Did it fall because we had a gun pointed at them? No, it fell because of the free market. Because people want to be free. We cannot even police Detroit or San Francisco how the hell are we supposed to be policing the rest of the world? Again, for 35 trillion dollars in debt, we cannot afford to be spreading military industrial complex crap around the world. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. We can't afford it anymore. I'm always on the side of less death. Uh, we cannot get peace in the world. We cannot be the protectors and, and rejectors of peace in the world if we're tied into every country on earth bombing the crap out of them. We spent 20 years replacing the Taliban with the Taliban. Our government sucks at foreign policy. We need to get the government out of foreign policy and start promoting peace around the world. Mike, last answer. I'm in all hours this time. No, no, Mike. <laughs> Look, NATO has to go. That's the bottom line. NATO is, NATO is a mediocre idea 50 years ago. It was a bad idea 25 years ago. And today it represents a death machine. The reason, the reason there is a war in Ukraine today, and I'm sorry to have to break the bad news to anyone who's Transition to a COVID question. Um, everyone on this stage obviously is against lockdowns, is against vaccine mandates. So, what, sorry, Co a COVID question. So, um, to make it more interesting, I'm going to phrase it: Were the vaccines safe and effective? 
Would you abolish the FDA, NIH, and CDC? Let's go to Michael first. Yes. As we were told, the vaccine versus the public safe and effective, safe and effective. They repeated this all over the news. This was total propaganda of the whole COVID regime. It was a propaganda for it. <laughs> During this crisis and before, I saw through the propaganda myself. I spoke around the country. Uh, detailing and arguing against the COVID totalitarianism under which we suffer. And this was a time of unprecedented propaganda, lies, and chicanery. There was nothing safe about it, there was nothing effective about it, and it was a total disaster. Trump, for ruling it out, is utterly, utterly to be condemned and earn our complete en 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 enmity. So, no, the COVID vaccines were not safe and effective. They were an utter disaster. And I should say that I saw this in the beginning. I spoke and wrote on it all over the place. You can read it on the Leafs Institute site. You can read it on my website. I've been in front of this from the very beginning. It's the candidate did not see through the COVID propaganda. Or if they enforce COVID mandate, then they do not deserve to be the leader of the Libertarian. So, Michael, I'm assuming you would also abolish FDA, CDC, NIH. Okay. Okay, we'll go to Chase. Jazz fest. We could have all the things that makes the world a social society. 
We need to see our friends. We can go home at the end of the day. Take our damn clothes off and throw them to the washing machine. Go take a shower and then sit out and watch a Zoom call. Or write a book. Do something. And that's something that's wrong. So if you say that, I think that somehow we all need to get a jab. The answer is hell no. We're still up here to argue that efficacy of a vaccine is asinine, but that's not many people in the state are actually scientists. Also, my stance on this is it's your body and it's your choice. I say this every day of my life when I'm taking care of patients. And I believe in taking care of the American people. I've done it for years and years and years. And I have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of patients. And I will attest to that. Okay, but so, so as a doctor, as a doctor, in your view, was it safe and effective? Uh, we saw, so when the first wave of COVID came down, it actually helped cut down hospitalizations. After that, it became ineffective. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Josh. Someone to act for what it is you have to do is not my place. 
military-minded administration who will leave you the hell alone.
Mike White, with TJ Guerrero, with, with, with Tyler Harris. I was talking to my team with Dan Johnson, and we were talking through all these policies, and every time we talked about a policy, we said the system is rigged. And I realized that everybody in America has been changed, affected by government in a negative way, and then we have to unrig the system, we have to unrig the criminal justice system, we have to unrig our education system, we have to unrig the health care system, we have to unrig our freaking economy. Yeah! Yeah, Charles, so how have you changed over the course of your campaign? Biggest change in opinion? I really think my political values, and I got into this race late, so um, I got into this race because I was just really upset watching the news cycle. So, you know, the most things may change. Um, so I threw myself into this race, and a great team. My wife is fantastic. It's a second, in my opinion. Um, but I think what I want to realize is Okay, yeah, we'll start with Michael. Um, I, 
So, I have the greatest name recognition beyond the Libertarian Party. I've had appearances on all major media, and I have a long as automated record of truth time. And I have, I have the, I am the only candidate with a strategy to bring liberty to the American people. I know Joshua 
go to let's go to Mike for the second one. Try to keep it short because we're running out of time.
I feel like the dream that my children will live in a country with a federal government who doesn't pay states one dollar for every 88 cents that they spend to separate families, force these children into single parent homes. I feel like my children will live in a free country, a country free of mental health care system that pushes children towards trendy anti science medications and mutilated surgeries. I dream that my children will be free to educate my grandchildren however they see fit without a federal government forcing them to standardize education. I dream of a world where my children won't be arrested and thrown into a violent rape cage for the crime of exercising their God-given rights to self defense by unconstitutional alphabet agencies. This is what's very important. I dream that my kids can be free to start an e-commerce website without the fear of being handed two life sentences in a federal prison because they weren't paying their protection fees. Most of have this dream that my kids can have more freedom than, than we all grew up with. I don't have the luxury of the black pill because that means giving up on my children, my grandchildren, and the future existence of our nation. The libertarians of the future which helps our children thrive and prosper. We can win, we are winning, we will win. Enough already, go for vengeance. Thanks everyone for watching. We're going to move on to the procedures now. Thank you.